Welcome back to the channel, y'all. It is time to talk about some archery stuff because the season is almost upon us. If you haven't started tinkering yet, you're late to the game. So I wanted to show you the bows that I'm most likely gonna be hunting with this year. And I've got three different categories of bows and we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna shoot them at some targets over here. And then we're gonna see if OSG can pull back one of these traditional bows and actually hit the target. The first bow, I, I might be the most excited about this, y'all. And, and this is the one that I've put the most work in. And that's because it's a self bow. So this is my 62 inch Hackberry. There's no recurve in it. This is very primitive style. It's got a rawhide backing and I made a string for it. I put some little fuzzies on there to quiet it down, but this, this bow sits around 55 pounds. I'm, I'm happy with the draw weight on it. It's definitely higher than the one that I used last year. And my goal has been to make one of these uh, every season now and get a deer with it. So shooting off the knuckle. All right, we're gonna go ahead and string it up. There we go. Nice and taut. Now, this is a bow that I'm probably not gonna hunt over 15 yards. Like all these bows I'm hunting whitetail with. So this is gotta get close, uh, up in a tree, in a ground blind. We're, we're getting very close. I hear a squirrel right now, speaking of close. Got a little something, got a little flu flu action for those babies. Fire one off real quick. Just like that, wah bam. We got a target right here behind us. I've got a little uh, tennis ball sitting in it, and th that's what I like to shoot at. The tennis ball kind of gives me something to really focus on when I'm not shooting 3D targets. The reason I'm not shooting at my 3D targets at my house right now is because it is so dry in Texas that my hay bales have become basically no, they're, they're not backstops at all. Like my arrows will just go through them. And I'm also scared if uh, I hit a rock and a spark comes off of that thing, it's gonna set the entire woods on fire. So that is where we're at with the heat. Instead of using wooden arrows, like last year, I switched up to a carbon arrow. I got these from uh, Three Rivers. They're traditional onlys. They're 400 uh, spine, and the 225s is what shot the best. I started at literally 100, and I went all the way up to 250, and then I came back down to 225. That's what makes the arrow fly the straightest. The hardest part, if you guys are gonna make a self bow, isn't really making the self bow it's, itself, is getting the arrows to match it and fly really well. So, big learning lesson from, from last year. Let's go ahead and fling one, shall we? Pretty close right there. I really have to, I have to sit there and point this thing and basically aim it visualize the arrow shot before I draw back and I'm trying to just steady myself on the draw coming to the corner of my mouth and making sure that everything just looks good at the final second and then I'll release I'm gonna guess this is 15 yards right here this is gonna be kind of max distance here we go. it's an absolute miss but you guys kind of get the idea for the speed. Let's step back and take a couple of shots at like 30 yards so you guys can see the, the, the rainbow. Let's come on back. By the way, got my lovely Cameron lady today, the beautiful OSG. <laughs> this is probably about 25, 25-ish. I'm gonna have to aim pretty high. Low. I mean, just that. In the next bow that we're going to shoot, there's a big difference. Oh, almost hit the tennis ball right there. Great shot. So even though that I got pretty close right there to the vitals, taking that shot, the animal's probably gonna duck it. Uh, the nice thing about this is it is quiet but every once in a while I get a little bit of arrow slap right there and it's just enough where I think a deer would, um, would definitely duck. So let me show you the next bow. Next bow, I got this as a training bow. 
I didn't want to shoot my, my primitive bow all the time and kind of wear it out. Uh, I've broken so many bows and it's so disappointing when you break one. And at this point, I do not want to have to go through the process of making another bow, tuning the arrows before hunting season. That's a huge deal for me. If I can get any kind of deer, any kind of deer with this bow right here, my gosh, I'm a hog in a, in a something. In the briar patch? I was gonna say a bad word and I chose not to. <laughs> so, love shooting this bow. This is a bear grizzly, 55 pounds. So it's the same draw weight as the bow that I made. However, it is so much more efficient at flinging arrows. And that's another reason why I wanted to get a just traditional recurve is to see how much performance you really get out of it. And this, it's, it's unbelievable how fast it makes the arrows go compared to the other 55 pound bow. I've shot everything from 100 up to 200s on these. They all fly the same, really doesn't matter. So I just chose something in the middle that uh, is very, very quick. So loading this bow up is a little different. Okay. String it up. Pull it down. Uh, there we go. Now, the one cool thing is I did make this string. I made this string because the one that came with it was too short, I felt. And it was, uh, the brace height was not high enough. So I made one that's just a little bit shorter and very pleased. Looks cool. Went with a little orange and black for the fall season. All right, 15 yards again, but you guys are gonna see, you're probably gonna hear the pop that comes off of this. It's, it's quite different. We almost hit our tennis ball. Extremely fast, extremely quick. The reason the recurve is, is so much faster is that on my bow, I've got, there's really no strength where the, at brace height, basically. It's very little strength at brace height. All the power is coming, coming from the full drawback. But with this, all that, uh, so much power is still right here at, because of the recurve that it just flings, it just flings up. Like if I ever want to go take a traditional bow elk hunting, this is going to be what I take because I don't have to change my aim very much between 10 yards out to 30 yards. So I can shoot 30 yards with this bow and still feel comfortable and not have to change my, my aim position. It just shoots flat and fast. All right, let's step it on back. This right here is probably 30. Probably 30. Let me check. Let me grab my rangefinder real quick. I would say the biggest, the biggest difference in going from compound hunting to traditional bow hunting is you just got you got to know these distances beforehand because you're you're just not gonna have time to range and do all this stuff. Or a feel. That's 30.3 yards, babe. I'm a human rangefinder. Let's go. <laughs> Got you it. See me? Everything's good. All right. I need to focus. I've been focusing on what I'm saying. I need to focus on my target. This is all instinct here. Well, I almost hit my GoPro. So, okay, here we go. Thirty yards. Oh, I think I, I think I hit the tennis ball, babe. Let's, let's take a look. Even though uh, this, this arrow is obviously way off target, um, you'll notice that the elevation didn't change much between the two shots. And that's, that's really the great thing that I like about this bow is I'm just, I'm aiming at the target without having to compensate from 10 to 30 yards. It's all the same. Point and shoot, it's like throwing a baseball. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we have the traditional style, we have the primitive style, and now we have the modern style. So I've got my Bowtech CP28. Um, I've got a few bows from Bowtech. This is just the one that I love to go back to. I shoot it all the time. 
I, it, I just love, I love the let off. I love how short, compact it is. I also love that about that recurve that I just showed you for hunting situations, not shooting targets. I mean, we're shooting targets right now, but when the real deal comes, you want every advantage you can out in the woods. So this is the one I just feel very comfortable with. And also, I don't shoot a peep on here. So all these bows, I'm kind of shooting. This one I'm, I'm aiming, obviously I have, have a sight on the front. I've went from shooting like a five pin, you know, every, all the bells and whistles, and I've, I've reduced things down after I started uh, traditional archery. It makes you focus on your form, your release a lot more. Uh, just the basics and then when you pick up one of these you feel like a superhero So I definitely recommend if you guys are shooting compound Get yourself a recurve too and just practice with it You know practice with a few weeks and then pick up this baby and you're gonna be You're gonna be so dialed so CP 28. I've got a single pin on here and it's set at 30 yards so my, my same, same kind of concept here with the last bow is I'm, my goal is not to range every time the deer takes a step and get you know super dialed and, and dial this thing in. What I found in my years of hunting is that most of the situations, it's, it happens in a blink of an eye and you gotta be ready and you don't have time to do a lot of that extra stuff that when you're sitting here in the yard and you're doing it and you're it's it's all good and fun you're dialed but the deer is looking at you you're trying not to get caught there's a lot of pressure uh you need to make it happen quick so knowing yardages and then also not having to adjust things is really nice uh, another thing that's really great about this i instead of a stabilizer i have a, a light wah bam so we can hunt hogs at night with this um, I do have a nose button on here, so that is my anchor. So I have an anchor for my release. My, uh, my fingers, my two front fingers there, they go on my jawline. That will kind of shift a little bit, but the nose button keeps me, keeps me on target with, those, with those, uh, those two anchor points. So let's put an arrow in here. Last year I shot a different arrow, but I'm shooting the, the VAP TKOs. Uh, the 300 spine and I'm shooting a feather on it so you can see another, another thing where it's like a traditional a little traditional flare on a modern setup Just put me in the back in the olden days <laughs> just becoming an old man then that's where you belong it's okay I'll be there with I'm with a simple you. guy I'm a simple <laughs> guy <sighs> all right let's rock some balls honey you know what I'm saying rock some balls rock some balls see that ball down there <laughs> I'm about to rock it with this arrow. All right. Uh, 125s is what I'm shooting on here. We're probably about 25 yards right here. So let's test our, our little system. All right, 25 yards. We're, we're just going to aim a little below. I'm guessing the yardage too. I don't actually know. There's biceps. Look at that ball. <laughs> that ball is pegged. My eyes were not on the ball. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you were distracted. Mm -hmm. huh? I was distracted. Yeah, yeah. You get out there and shoot that bow every day, them girls are gonna be all over you now. <laughs> so I don't know what yardage this is, but uh, let's, let's step back a little bit actually. That was probably 25. We said that was, this was 30. This was 30 right here. So that's, we know that's going to be on, on the 30 pin. So let's step, let's step back over here. Ooh. And this is probably going to be 40 yards. So 40 yards, we're going to keep our 30 yard pin and see what our drop is from there. And ideally I, I just practice this and then I'll know like, okay, I need to aim, you know, eight inches high or whatever right here. I'm going to guess, Yeah, I, it might even be a foot. I'm gonna guess 10 inches. Let's see what happens here.
smoked it. Were you recording? Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> look. That's going to make me look good on YouTube. <laughs> See there. I, don't, I actually don't even know which was which. But I never changed my pin. And I didn't have a peep. I like practicing this way. And I like shooting this way. Because I feel like this is how people had to hunt a long time ago. It's not like instinct. It's like a muscle memory. Yeah, but it's like if you if you you know walk around the yard and you shoot at a bunch of different distances just randomly and you don't range, then you're just get you're gonna get used to that. Like your mind's gonna get used to that. That's the way that I'm. Uh, I've got this bow set up. I've got another bow that I'm going to set up um, that I'm probably not gonna put a peep on either, and I'm gonna do a full bow build for you guys. But I think I'm going to shoot this same arrow in all of my compounds, same single pin sight. That's, my, that's the way I'm setting up my compounds to hunt. It's got a little bit of traditional flair on it and I'm um, just keeping it basic because I'm a simple man, honey. I'm a simple man. All right, my lovely bride, OSG. I think the folks at home and I would like to see you shoot an arrow <laughs> okay. and just see what happens. I mean, we got a pretty open space. We should be able to find it. I want you to pick up the one that's already strung there. Okay. That bear grizzly. You think I'll be, do better with that one versus this one? Yes, I do. Okay. Because it's got a shelf. You don't have to put it on your finger. OSG gloving up. Got to get my, my bracelets out of the way. <laughs> Come over here. Let's, uh, let's get about seven yards away. Now this would be like the ideal deer distance. Like if you that were in a hunting situation, close. it would be very close. You almost, you, it'd be tough to even draw back. You're so close, but this would be like, you're probably not going to miss. You know what I mean? Like if you <laughs> well, practice you a little that. bit, but you're probably not going to miss. <laughs> so I don't think you're going to be able to draw that bow all the way back um, because of the weight. But do you, do you have an idea of like the grip? Yeah. Kind of an idea. Like, a so you do three fingers. Right. Yep, three fingers. Oh! <clears throat> this is when it's all, it all comes down to it after holding all those babies. Yeah, you do. You have some guns. That's about as hard, hard as I can go. Okay. Well, here's there's a, there's a technique called snap shooting. And um, I, I still kind of shoot this way. I don't even anchor that much, really. You just kind but, of... Yeah, yeah. You, you basically just pull, like, pull and pluck. You pull and pluck, okay. but the, how you aim is how you saw me aiming is you will um, you'll get it on the target. Mm -hmm. You'll line everything up, basically look down your arrow, like get your fingers. Here. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Get your fingers on there okay. and kind of hold your, hold this arm steady. So like that. There you go. But watch your shelf. Cant the bow a little bit. Okay. So it stays on the shelf. And aim lower than you think. Okay. Aim lower than you think. So just give it a, a pull and pluck. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dove back there. Just I know, going. I saw that. Dove. We're like a few weeks away from dove season. Uh, Let's oh, give it another nice. <laughs> What is the cock vein? Familiar for the, with the cock vein? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is. Uh, There's so many great names in this. Archery is, actually has some pretty insane. So this needs to be facing towards me? Yes. Is kind of what it is? Yes, on a, on a traditional bow like this, yes. Okay, I'll pull back go. like this. Yeah, you pull back and... Oh my okay. gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh, she crushed it. Whoa! Okay, that's not too bad, right? Oh, that's excellent. As long as your arrows are, are grouping good, then you can, you can adjust those things. Okay. But the, the form... Is your arrows getting close together? Obviously, you got one on the ground right here. That's that's a that's a. Yeah, that was my test run. Exactly. That's the first run. We won't even count that. Let's see. You know, I think women have a great um, abilities in archery. You said so yourself because they we have do. good aim. Well, um, usually you take better instruction too. Yeah. As men are a little more stubborn on. I could be completely talking out of my rear end right now, but I think uh, back in like the. 1800s, 1700s, I think um, that like kings and queens, the uh, princesses, they all practiced archery and they had like games. 
and that was it was very common. It was a status thing if you were good at archery. Mm. It was. But it, it was also a peasant thing because I mean, if you think about like Robin Hood. I don't know. I'm completely <laughs> talking out of my butt. <laughs> but anyway, let's see you hit this tennis ball, okay. princess. Now the pressure's on. Princess hitting the tennis ball here. A little high. Mm, a little high. A little high. Make sure to get on. Get on the tennis ball first before you even pull back. Like feel confident in that arrow where you're aiming it before you even pull back and then hold that left shoulder steady. Okay, so aim first and then Yeah, pull aim back. first. Yeah, get it get it on there and then hold that shoulder steady. Okay. Ooh. You had a little oh, pop on that one. I know, that's why I said aim lower than you think. Now I will show you something that will completely change that. Put uh, your three fingers below the knock. Instead of splitting them, really? put all of them below and do your same aim. That wouldn't make it higher? It would make it lower? Just watch. That feel better? It does actually. It feels more manageable. Yep, you should, you should aim lower with that grip. Or should hit lower. There you go. A little too low. low a little too low. <laughs> a little too low. But I feel like you were more consistent. Look, two of them on target. Two, but they're like, they've all been on that side, that left side. And that's manageable. But some people actually, they, they adjust their, uh, their target distance aim that way. They'll change their grips. Okay. Because it's something, I don't know the physics of it. But anyway, you shoot through below. I can't shoot that way because I've muscle memory, I'm split, and I do everything by, I just adjust the elevation. The most important thing with archery is consistency. Like you could have a weird, it's like a golf swing. Some people have really weird golf swings, but if their muscle memory is, is on par and they do everything the same every time, it doesn't matter. As long as they get it? Yeah, it really doesn't matter. As long as you're doing the same thing every time. You're, you're, you're flopping, you're <laughs> flopping a little bit. So what you wanna do is come back and then act like you're gonna release directly behind you, like directly behind you. Like okay. your shoulder's just gonna fall like down that way okay. instead of going to the side. Okay. Wow, that was good. That was very good. Did I that still, feel good? Did I still pluck. <laughs> that feel good? It did. Okay. And I, I got it all the way back. Yeah, you almost just want to let it slip through your fingers. Just loosen your grip a little bit and let it slide out of there. OSG did really good. I, we probably should get her a trad bow, like a 35 pound trad bow, just to, just to plink around with. What is this? That's 55. Okay. And most people probably hunt with 45, 50. I got the 55 because I wanted to practice with uh, the same poundage as my traditional. And if I ever wanted to like, you know, go elk hunting or something, I got a lot of, a lot of pop. Surprisingly, a lot of pop on that bow. So, OSG, I think, I think we gotta get you a bow. It's fun, I like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is concluding all three of my bow setups. Is it a turn on or no? It's a turn on, I feel like, yeah. It's like a primitive skill. I mean, women are attracted to like more primitive skills. It's, it's in like the base of your brain. Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, all right. Well, there you go, guys. Get it. Build yourself a primitive bow. <laughs> and, Get some ladies. Um, stay tuned for my, my bow build that I'm going to be starting from scratch. If, if you're new, if you're wanting to get your bow set up, stay tuned for that and more outdoor action here. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.